Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. I will call upon Yahuwah, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Rise up, O Yahuwah. Let thine enemies be scattered. Let them that hate thee flee from before thee. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Kodesh Nation and to our Shabbat class. Praise Yahuwah. Brothers and sisters, today the Shabbat lesson is going to be entitled, The Error of the Pharisees. The Error of the Pharisees. Brothers and sisters, I believe that this is an important lesson, especially for those who don't yet understand the importance of uh, walking after the Torah uh, as a believer in the Messiah of Yashra'al. Praise Yahuwah. And I, I'm bringing this out because especially a lot of us when we were in church, we had a misconception of uh, the Pharisees and just what exactly uh, the problem was with them because we know they're problematic. We know that uh, Yahusha had problems uh, with them. Praise Yahuwah. But we're going to uh, dig into those problems and we're going to see what their error was, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. And I believe that's going to help our understanding of the place that the Torah should hold uh, in our lives as believers in the Messiah, Yahusha. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to begin in Matthew chapter 5. Very familiar passage. We are going to start in verse 17. The word reads, do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. For truly I say to you, till the heaven and the earth pass away, one yod or one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so, shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the reign of the heavens. Now, I bring this out, brothers and sisters, because that's a strong statement he makes, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter in to the reign of the heavens. And no doubt that was a shocking statement to the people of his day because the scribes and the Pharisees, they really appeared righteous unto men. So for him to say that, you know, the, the common person of that day might be thinking that how in the world can I ever, how in the world can I ever make it in? I mean, if these righteous men can't make it in, then where does that leave uh, somebody like me? Because they appeared righteous unto men. Hallelujah. But uh, brothers and sisters, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through Matthew 23. Matthew 23 is uh, a pretty extensive chapter dealing with uh, Yahusha and the problems that he had with the Pharisees. And as we go through this, because when we were in the churches, we believed some things concerning the Pharisees that just wasn't true. And it affected how we saw the scriptures and how we related to the Torah. That I know that I myself, that I had a view at one time of the Pharisees, that they were just strict law keepers. You know, that they were, uh, people, people would say legalists, that they were strict according to the law. And they, they, they kept the very strict letter of the law, but they did not keep the spirit of the law. And so they kept the letter of the law to the T, but their hearts weren't right because they, they didn't keep the spirit of the law. How many of y'all have heard that? When you're in the churches, how many of y'all have heard that or believed that? Brothers and sisters, as we go through uh, Matthew chapter 23, especially, and there's other places we're going to go through as well. I want you to ask yourself the question, 
that were, according to Yahusha now, because he's given a true testimony here, were the Pharisees strict law keepers? That were they strict keepers of the letter of the law? Ask yourself that question as we go through uh, these, these passages, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Now, Matthew chapter 23. And we're going to start at the top. The word reads, Then Yahusha spoke to the crowds and to his taught ones, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moshe. Therefore, whatever they say to you, Whatever they say to you to guard, guard and do, but do not according to their works, for they say and do not. Now I'm going to stop here, because this is an important distinction to make. Praise Yah. I have a note here. Now I'm reading from the Scriptures translation. And in this note, they, they have a, a notation by the word they. Whatever they say to you to guard, guard and do. And the note says, four of eleven available Shem Tov texts. This is talking about the Hebrew Matthew now. It says, four of the eleven available Shem Tov texts read, he says, referring to Moshe or Masha, instead of they say, referring to the Pharisees. And so, the further you go into this uh, chapter, the more you're going to see the context and whether it makes more sense for him to say, observe whatever they say to do, meaning the Pharisees, or observe whatever he says to do, meaning Masha. And so it should really read, brothers and sisters, that whatever he says to do. Now the scribes and Pharisees, they sit in the seat of Moshe, of Masha. Therefore, whatever he says to you to guard, guard and do, but do not after according to their works, for they say and they do not do. So in other words, that if they're telling you something to do that is out of the Torah of Masha, then you, you do it. Do it, you know, do it. If it's something Masha said, if it's something Moshe said, then guard and do it because that's the word of Yah out of the Torah. But is he really saying that whatsoever they say to do, to guard and do it, praise Yahuwah, we're going to see through the, this lesson the things that they not only were doing, but they were telling other people to do as well. And we're going to see that that's a bad interpretation of this verse, whatsoever they say to do. We're going to see that the proper inter interpretation is whatsoever he, M Moshe, whatsoever he, he says to do guard and to do it Hallelujah. now verse 3 says verse 4 rather for they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders but with their finger they do not wish to move them and they do all their works to be seen by men they make their tefillin wide and lengthen the zit zit of their garments and they love the best place at feasts and the best seats in the congregations and the greetings in the marketplaces and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But you do not be called Rabbi for one is your teacher, the Messiah, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth your father for one is your father, he who is in the heavens. Neither be called leaders for one is your leader, the Messiah. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself shall be humbled and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. Praise Yahuwah. And so we see this, this form of self-exaltation that they practiced. And how you know we see it in the churches uh, quite a bit as far as the, the preachers having a very high and exalted physical position uh, above the people. And... Uh, the flattering titles and just the, uh, the, the best seats in the congregations and, and uh, the greetings, you know, in, in the marketplaces. But Yahushua denounced all these things as 
uh, a form of self-exaltation. It was something that did not exalt Yah. It exalted them. It exalted these men. Praise Yahuwah. Now, keep your place in Matthew 23. I want to show you uh, another instance of self-exaltation regarding the Pharisees. In Luke chapter 18, as we keep our place in Matthew 23, Luke chapter 18, we're going to start in verse 10. The word reads, Two men went up to the set-apart place to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and began to pray with himself this way, Allahim, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men, swindlers, unrighteous, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. But the tax collector, standing at a distance, would not even raise his eyes to the heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, Allahim, show favor unto me, a sinner. I say to you, this man went down to his house, declared right, rather than the other. For whoever is exalting himself shall be humbled, and he who is humbling himself shall be exalted. And so, question, brothers and sisters, that is self-exaltation, is that a quality that is in keeping with the Torah? Praise Yahuwah. Well, we're going to see. So turn to Matthew chapter 17. We're going to see what the Torah has to say about self-exaltation. Matthew chapter 17. And now, when that Pharisee talked about fasting twice in the week, giving tithes out of all that he possessed, this is something that I, I'm going to deal with more uh, a little later. But I want to deal with this self-exaltation a little more before we move on in uh, Devarim, which is Deuteronomy chapter 17. We're going to begin in verse 14. The word reads, When you come to the land which Yahuwah your Elohim is giving you, and shall possess it, and shall dwell in it, and you shall say, Let me set a sovereign over me like all the nations that are around me. You shall certainly set a sovereign over you whom Yahuwah your Elohim shall choose. Set a sovereign over you from among your brothers. You are not allowed to set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Only he is not to increase horses for himself, nor, nor cause the people to return to Mitzrayim to increase horses. For Yahuwah has said to you, Do not return that way again. And he is not to increase wives for himself, lest his heart turn away nor is he to greatly increase silver and gold for himself. And it shall be when he sits on the throne of his reign that he shall write for himself a copy of this Torah and a book from the one before the priests, the Luites, and it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life so that he learns to fear Yahuwah his Elohim and guard all the words of this Torah and these laws and to do them so that his heart is not lifted up above his brothers. And so as not to turn aside from the command, right or left, so that he prolongs his days in the rain, he and his children in the midst of Yashra'al. So we see that this was the purpose of having the king make a copy of the Torah for himself and to keep it with him and to read it all the days of his life to learn to fear Yahuwah, to guard all the words of the Torah and what's the purpose of that? So that his heart is not lifted up above his brothers. Brothers and sisters, the Pharisees, their hearts were lifted up above their brethren. So that was, that was directly contrary to this Torah command here. I realize that this is talking about kings here. Praise Yahuwah. But we see that uh, a man's heart being lifted up against his brethren, that that's contrary to the fear of Yah. Such a man does not fear Yah. Praise Yahuwah. And he's not keeping all the commandments of Yahuwah because he's not loving his neighbor as himself. People who exalt themselves above the brethren, they hate it when people exalt themselves above them because, see, they want to be the big cheese. And so that uh, they're not loving their neighbor as themselves. They're not treating people as they would be treated. So we see there that self-exaltation is contrary to the Torah. So if we go back to Matthew 23, and we're going we're gonna to move on, because remember we're asking ourselves the question, were the Pharisees uh, keeping the strict letter of the law? Was it that they kept the strict letter but just missed the spirit? 
or did they just miss the letter of the law as well? Praise Yah, remember that question. Keep it in mind as we go through this. Now, verse 13, it says, But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut up the rain of the heavens before men, for you do not go in, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you eat up widows' houses, and for a show make long prayers. Because of this, you shall receive greater judgment. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you go about the land and sea to win one convert, and when he is one, you make, of a, uh, you make him a son of Gehinom, twofold more than yourselves. Now, let me stop here. Now, dealing with the widows, it talked about devouring widows' houses by going in and making long prayers. In other words, they knew if they went in uh, to these widows' houses, and they made these long prayers, these long, beautiful prayers, that these widows would be given up the, that money. And I've seen that in action before, even in these modern times, that there is a, a man on radio, a Hebrew preacher, and he, and he would get on there, and, and, and he would be praying for people, and he'd always make sure he threw some tongues in there, and, and it, just, just these real, uh, 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 just elaborate and beautiful prayers and these widows would always be calling in and and sending him money and whatnot same type of deal you don't have to get into their physical house as far as in this high-tech modern age but back then they would go to their houses and make these flowery prayers knowing that these old women would give up that money mm -hmm. you see for for the ministry and so Yahusha saw their heart he said they devoured widows houses it's almost like they had a system going almost like they talked to one another and listen you want to get you some money this is what you do you know you see that see that, that old lady there you go to her house you make a beautiful prayer i mean they had a system down pat and it was wicked in the eyes of yah so what we're going to do next is that we are going to uh we're going to take a look at what yah has to say concerning widows and how he feels about widows and how he feels about people who take advantage of widows. Now, in Shemot, which is Exodus chapter 22, we're going to start in verse 22. The word reads, And the word reads, Do not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you do afflict them at all, if they cry out to me at all, I shall certainly hear their cry. And my wrath shall burn, and I shall kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. This is the only place in the scriptures that I'm aware of where Yah says directly, I will kill you. I mean, very strong words. When Yah says, I will kill you, you better listen. You better listen up. Praise Yahuwah. Because if he says, if he, says he will kill you, you're going to be killed. Praise Yahuwah. There's just no way around that. I mean, you could be delivered from the wrath of the devil, but you can't be delivered from the wrath of Yah. Right. Praise Yah. And so we see how Yah feels about widows, and we see how Yah feels about people who take advantage of widows, but that's exactly what the Pharisees were doing. So let's ask ourselves the question again. Were they strict legal keepers of the Torah? Did they keep the strict letter of the Torah Yet they just miss the spirit yes. of the Torah. You know, like the churches taught us. Is that the case here? How they dealt with the widows. Is this the keeping of the strict letter of the Torah? Praise Yahuwah. Now, uh, Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. There's so much I could say about this subject, but I just want to hit some high points just to get my point across. Brothers and sisters, praise Yahuwah. And I say this because... If you're one who pursues a, a Torah observant life in the Messiah, a lot of times, you know what people accuse you of being? Accuse you of being a Pharisee. They say, oh, that's like those Pharisees. Those Pharisees were into the law, the strict letter of the law. No, you're trying to keep the law. You're a Pharisee. Brothers and sisters, we're looking at the true testimony of the Pharisees according to Yahushua Mashiach himself. Praise Yahuwah. 
And, and we're already beginning to see that when Yahusha said, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the, the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the reign of the heavens. We're already beginning to see how the, the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees wasn't as high as people thought it was. Because the way that uh, the, a lot of the churches interpret that verse is that because they did keep the strict letter of the Torah, that you're going to have to be, um, you're going to have to uh, have the righteousness of the Messiah upon you because he was more righteous uh, than them. And so, uh, but that's not what Yahusha said. He said, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. It's like Deuteronomy chapter uh, uh 6 verses 25 talks about it shall be our righteousness if we shall observe to do all these laws and commandments. Yahuwah said himself in Yekeskiel, Ezekiel chapter 18, that if that wicked man turns from his wickedness and does that which is lawful and right, all his wickednesses that he has done in time past, they will not be remembered to him anymore in his righteousness, which he has done, he shall live. Praise Yahuwah. And so, praise Yah, brothers and sisters. He said, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. But what we're beginning to see was their righteousness was not as high as people thought it was, even according to the strict letter of the Torah. Now, Luke chapter 16, verse 13, the word reads, No servant, this is Yahusha speaking, no servant is able to serve two masters, for either he shall hate the one and love the other, or he sh shall cling to the one and despise the other. You are not able to serve Elohim and Mammon. And the Pharisees who love silver, King James says, who are covetous. Pharisees who are covetous. Here it says, and the Pharisees who love silver also heard all this, and they were sneering at him. So they were mocking, ridiculing, belittling him, sneering at him. And he said to them, You are those who declare yourselves righteous before men, but Elohim knows your hearts, because what is highly thought of among men is an abomination in the sight of Elohim. In other words, you're not fooling anybody. I mean, you're not fooling Elohim. You may be fooling men, but you're not fooling Elohim now. See, the eyes of Yahuwah are in every place beholding the, the good and the evil of man. Praise Yahuwah. And so it's uh, all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahuwah weighs the spirits. So we got to remember that, and that should put fear in our hearts, brothers and sisters. And so uh, with them devouring the, uh, the widows, and with this episode here, the Yahusha is dealing with, we see another problem that they had, and that is that they were covetous. They loved money. They loved silver, brothers and sisters, silver and gold. And we know that that's, that's one of the basic commandments, brothers and sisters, is thou shalt not covet. Praise Yahuwah. And so we're going to uh, turn to Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to see... Another example of their covetousness. And this is a form of covetousness that appeared, it appeared righteous unto men, but Yahusha exposed it for what it really was. Now Matthew 15 verse 1, it says, Then there came to Yahusha scribes and Pharisees from Jerusalem, saying, Why do your taught ones transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do, they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. But he answering said to them, Why do you also transgress the command of Elohim? Because of your tradition. For Elohim is commanded, saying, Respect your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me has been dedicated, is certainly released from respecting his father or mother, so that you have nullified the command of Elohim by your tradition. Hypocrites, Yeshayahu rightly prophesied about you, saying, 
This people draw near to me with their mouth and respect me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. It, but in vain do they worship me, teaching as teachings the commands of men. So we see a couple things at work here, brothers and sisters. We see the covetousness at work, where the, the, the Pharisees, they coveted that money that people had stored back that they were going to take care of their parents with. So they came up with this tradition of the elders that, hey, you take that money that you're going to take care of your parents with, and you dedicate it, dedicate it to the house of Yah or to the ministry, and then you're released from that. And so that was a tradition of man that caused them to actually break the commandment of Yah and by causing people to not honor their mother and their father. So it was covetousness that uh, motivated that because it was a, uh, a scheme to get more money in like that. And so thou shalt not covet. It's so basic. Thou shalt not covet is the letter of the law. It's not some deep spiritual mystery. It's, it's written right in stone. Thou shalt not covet. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing we're dealing with here, brothers and sisters, is the traditions of men, and especially making the, the word of Yah of none effect through their traditions. Praise Yahuwah. And so, what does the Torah have to say about that? If you could turn with me to Devarim, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going to read verses 1 and 2. The word reads, And now, O Yashra'al, listen to the laws and the right rulings which I am teaching you to do so that you live and shall go in and possess the land which Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers is giving you. Do not add to the word which I command you, and do not take away from it, so as to guard the commands of Yahuwah your Elohim, which I am commanding you. So we see that this was a sin, brothers and sisters, for the Pharisees to add to the word of Yah by their traditions. They would add to the word and they would also take away from the word. So they're violating Devarim chapter 4 verse 2 here. So Devarim 4 2 is the letter of the Torah, brothers and sisters, just like thou shalt not covet. And so, of course, the answer to our question is that the question being, did the Pharisees really keep the strict letter of the Torah? Praise Yahuwah. And so the answer, of course, is no. Now, we, we know that they didn't keep the, uh, the spirit of the Torah because Yahusha, he told them that the scribes and Pharisees, that they tithe of the mint and cumin and anise, but they omit the weightier matters of the Torah, judgment, mercy, uh, trust, the uh, amina or belief, trust, what they call faith, and uh, just compassion. They neglected those things. But they, they majored, uh, I've heard it say before, they majored in the minors, you know, and made a big deal out of their, their tithing. And if you remember how that Pharisee who went up with the publican to the temple and how he, he, how they, he said that I tithe of all that I possess and uh, I fast twice in the week. Do you know that both of those were traditions of the elders? To, fast, to, to tithe of every little teeny tiny thing that you've got, that was a tradition of the elders. That's not a command of Yah. Yah, Yah uh, called them to tithe of, uh, of their produce, you know, and what they would sow in the field and what they would bring in, but just every little minute thing they would tithe. That's a tradition of the elders. And also the, the fasting twice in the week, that was a tradition of the elders too. So we see this Pharisee, how he excelled in the tradition of the elders. Praise God. But he didn't go home justified like that other man. You see, that other man, he said, be merciful to me. Would not even look up to the Shamayim, to the heavens. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Praise God. He realized he was falling short and he, and he humbled himself. He didn't exalt himself like that Pharisee did. Praise Yahuwah. So brothers and sisters, this is how the Pharisees were in general. Now, 
there were some righteous Pharisees. They weren't all like that. Praise Yah. But in general, they were like that. You know, that we, we have uh, Noctimon. Praise Yahuwah. But we have uh, Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yah, you are great. We give you praise. We give you praise. Let's just get that distraction out of the way. Praise Yahuwah. But, uh, you know, we have Nakdemon, who is also called Nicodemus. You see, he, he, he was a, a ruler uh, of the Yahudim and, and a Pharisee. You know, from what I understand, you had believing Pharisees, you know, that we see even in the, uh, even in the book of Acts. And so there were righteous Pharisees, brothers and sisters, praise Yahuwah. Not all of them were bad, but that we see that uh, in general, in other words, most of them, most of them fit under the category of uh, what, Yusha, what Yahusha was talking about. Because the only way you couldn't fit in that category, the only way you could be a righteous Pharisee is if you follow the teachings of Yahusha. That if you are still a part of that group, but you didn't do the traditions of the elders that would go that, that would make the word of Yah of none effect. If you would discontinue that, that'd be the only way that you could be righteous, brothers and sisters. And so that uh, I said all that to say this: that this was the true error of the Pharisees, that they clung so tightly to the traditions of the elders that they made the word of Yah of none effect. Therefore, see, how could they be keeping the strict letter of the Torah if they made the word of Yah of none effect, if they made the commandment of Yah of none effect? And so by them adhering so strictly to the tradition of the elders and things that just exalted them in the sight of men, that they neither kept the letter of the Torah nor the spirit of the Torah. That is the true testimony of the Pharisees. I don't care what anybody else says, brothers and sisters. I don't even care if somebody uh, comes on the scene and says that I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees and according to the righteousness which is in the Torah, I was blameless. Well, brothers and sisters, I just got through telling you that according to the righteousness that is in the Torah, you are blameless. If you were a Pharisee, the only way you could have been righteous is if you followed Yahusha and you didn't do the traditions of the elders that made the word of Yah of none effect. Praise Yah. And so, uh, so if, if you're saying you're a Pharisee of Pharisees and, and according to the righteousness of the Torah, that you are blameless, and especially if you're also saying you're, you're zealous of the traditions of your fathers. Yet according to the righteousness of the Torah, you are blameless, you're lying. According to the words of Yahusha himself, you're lying. Because that's impossible. Praise Yahuwah. It was, it, it was impossible to be a Pharisee in Yahusha's time, to be exceeding zealous of the traditions of the fathers, and to be blameless according to the righteousness which is in the Torah. That's impossible. Praise Yahuwah. According to the words of Yahusha himself. Praise Yah. Because those who were zealous of the traditions of their fathers, they were making the word of Yah of none effect through those same traditions. Praise Yahuwah. And they were not blameless according to the righteousness that is in the Torah because they were covetous, because they added to the word of Yah and took away, being zealous of the traditions of the fathers. Praise Yahuwah. They neither kept the, the letter of the Torah nor the spirit of the Torah. So brothers and sisters, we need to accept Yahusha's testimony of the Pharisees, no matter what anybody else says, brothers and sisters, because that, that it's this false testimony of the Pharisees that causes uh, people in the churches and even us in time past to have this idea that people that are trying to live a Torah observant life in the Messiah, that they're Pharisees. They're being Pharisees. I remember that uh, when I was in the work world and I had a computer job and this was after I had uh, graduated college and it was 
somehow the subject of Halloween came up that uh, I think it might have been even around the time of Halloween. Now, I was in church at the time, but I, I, wasn't, de I wasn't doing Halloween. Yeah, I, had, I had gotten away from that. I knew that was demonic. But uh, I remember there was a co-worker of mine, and he was a professing Christian. And yeah, I, was a, yeah, I was a professing Christian at the time, too. And we were talking about Halloween, and he was telling me about his experience about um, that, that of going to a haunted house. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they, they were maybe in a bus. He might have been in a church group because some church groups take the children to these, you know, these haunted houses and, and whatnot. But whether he was with a church group or, you know, with his family, whatever the case may be, he said he saw some um, Christian folk out there and they had signs up and they were picketing and they were standing against the haunted house. And just talking about it was an abomination, how that they shouldn't be going there. And just how when he would talk about this, these people, his disposition, his countenance would change. And he said, yeah, those people out there like them Pharisees, you know, like Pharisees. And they, are, they, they had them signs and picketing and they are coming against the, 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 the haunted house there on Halloween like them Pharisees. And see, it's that mentality that... Um, because uh, they were just merely standing for what Devarim chapter 18 is talking about, being against all the necromancy and witches and wizards and devils and sorcery and all that stuff. That's in the Torah, praise Yah. But it's that wrong idea that if you're standing for what the Torah says, you're being a Pharisee, being like them Pharisees, praise Yah. That is inaccurate, brothers and sisters, even according to the words of Yahusha himself. And see that not everybody knew that, too. I mean, everybody in their day thought that they were just strict keepers of the Torah, praise Yahuwah, because they did not realize with all the traditions of men that the Pharisees piled on top of the Torah, they didn't realize that they were breaking the Torah by doing that, adding to the word of Yah and taking away from the word of Yah. So don't be fooled, brothers and sisters, and don't be discouraged by family member family members church folks and people that that are ignorant of the scriptures who want to tell you that you're being a pharisee because you're trying to keep the torah and that's what the pharisees did if they tell you that correct them which with what you've learned in this teaching take them to the the very words of yahusha himself and show how no they were strict keepers of the traditions of men and because they were strict keepers of the traditions of men, they made the word of Yah of none effect. They added to the word. They took away from the word. They were covetous. They exalted themselves. Praise Yahuwah. And so just show them how even out of the Torah, they, they did many things that transgressed the Torah of Yahuwah. So that was the true error of the Pharisees, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. And so... Praise Yah. I'm going to go ahead and, and close this uh, close this teaching out. Y'all be encouraged. Y'all you know, keep uh, pursuing a Torah observant life in the Messiah. Praise Yahuwah. And with that, I will say, Shalom.